This video demonstrates the procedure for conducting the moisture density relations of in-place soils, often referred to as the Proctor test. In this video, test method A is being used to demonstrate how to perform the test according to AASHTO T180. For this procedure, each complete full Proctor test requires a minimum of 7 pounds of soil. The sample should be approximately 4 percentage points below optimum moisture. For the first point, the soil should barely form a cast when squeezed together. To begin this test procedure, weigh the empty mold without the base plate and collar to one one hundredth of a pound. To prevent the soil from sticking to the base plate, insert a paper disc in the bottom of the mold before adding soil. Assemble the mold and the detachable collar together and securely fasten them to the base plate of the Proctor hammer. Remix the test sample and add sufficient material to the mold to produce a compacted layer of approximately one inch. With the use of a spatula, gently level the soil surface in the mold. Using a manual compaction rammer or a similar device with a two inch face, lightly tamp the soil until it is no longer loose or fluffy. Release the hammer and set it down on the soil in the mold. Compact the soil with 25 evenly distributed blows of the compaction rammer. In this video, the use of a mechanical rammer is demonstrated. The procedure used with a mechanical rammer is the same as that of a handheld rammer. However, the mechanical rammer simplifies the process and generally provides a more uniform product at a much faster pace. The mechanical rammer is preset for the correct drop and the number of blows needed for each layer. Once the mechanical hammer has completed the 25 blows, lift the rammer up and lock it into place. Following compaction of each of the first four layers, any soil adjacent to the mold wall that has not been compacted shall be trimmed using a spatula and evenly distributed on top of the layer. Remix the sample before adding soil to the mold for the second layer. Repeat the process of leveling the soil with a spatula and taking the fluff out with a handheld rammer. Lower the rammer in place and begin the 25 blows with the compaction rammer. This process is repeated for all five layers. At the end of the last cycle, the top surface of the compacted soil should be above the top rim of the mold when the collar is removed. After the final layer of soil is compacted, remove the mold and detachable collar from the Proctor Hammer's base plate. Before removing the collar, first separate the soil above the mold using a spatula. When removing the collar, rotate it to break the bond between it and the soil before lifting it off the mold. This prevents dislodging of chunks of compacted soil when lifting the collar off. Once the collar is removed, trim the compacted soil even with the top of the mold. The trimming consists of many small scraping motions with a straight edge. The straight edge should be hardened steel at least 10 inches in length. It shall have one beveled cutting edge. When doing the final trimming of the compacted soil, care should be taken so no soil is removed below the edge of the mold. Therefore, the straight edge must not be flexible, thus preventing a concave soil surface. Clean all loose material from the outside of the mold and remove the paper disc from the bottom of the sample. Weigh the soil and the mold to the nearest one one hundred pound and record. The next step is to take a moisture sample. With the use of an extrusion jack, remove the compacted soil from the mold. 
using a large knife or some similar piece of equipment, slice the plug of soil vertically down the center. Remove approximately 100 grams of soil from one of the cut faces. Take the soil for the moisture sample from the full length of the cut face to ensure a representative moisture sample. Place the sample in a container that is not subject to change in mass on repeated heating and cooling. The container must have a close fitting lid to prevent loss of moisture from the sample. Weigh the sample and container immediately. One container is needed for each moisture content determination. Oven dry the sample to a constant weight according to Ashto T265, Laboratory Determination of Moisture Content of Soils. Once the first point is completed, return the remaining portion of the molded specimen to the mixing pan and break it up. As demonstrated here, the use of a large knife or some similar piece of equipment generally works the best. The material being broken up should be reduced to the size that will pass through a number 4 sieve as judged by the eye. After the sample has been broken up, add it to the remaining portion of the original sample and thoroughly mix the two together. The use of a large mixer shown here aids in getting the soil thoroughly mixed together. For the second point, the moisture content in the soil should be increased approximately 1 to 2 percentage points over the preceding specimen. This can be accomplished by adding approximately 60 milliliters of water to the soil and thoroughly mix the two together to a uniform condition. Adding that amount of water will generally raise the moisture content of the sample to the desired percentage. A large mixer is ideal for mixing the soil and the water. The purpose of this procedure is to increase the moisture content in each succeeding sample until the peak density is reached or the density decreases as more water is added.